Well, hey, everybody, this is Chris DeFurio with Keys to the Shop. Welcome to another edition of Shift Break. Today's episode is brought to you by La Marzocco, who has been creating espresso machines by hand in Florence since 1927. La Marzocco offers the world's most innovative, dependable, and beautiful espresso machines in order to serve the needs of their customers in coffee retail. Some of the best coffee bars around the world have a La Marzocco at the heart of their business. For that very reason, the KB90 espresso machine with its straight in locking porta filters for ergonomics, scales in the drip tray for accuracy of extractions, and auto flush for cleanliness of your group heads and workflow is just one example of many different types of espresso machines that have been designed with the end user in mind and to really make a statement of beauty and functionality in your coffee shop. La Marzocco is available to help you make the right choice for your coffee bar. All you need to do is reach out to info at lamarzoccousa.com. One of their salespeople will help you select the right machine for your coffee shop. And also don't forget to check out their website, USA. Dot com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Espressly, who creates custom branded mobile apps for your coffee bar. With Espressly, you're not just another dot on the map. This is a deeply personal and effective way to uh, get your customers the kind of experience with mobile apps that is very similar to your coffee bar. And so they get the feel and the convenience through Espressly. It's a no-risk model when you work with Espressly. There's no setup or development fees. Uh, you get a drive through payment scanner, receipt and label printing capabilities. All of the data is stored in the app and it integrates with some of the world's best payment processing systems. Of course, that includes Square. So if you're looking to get into mobile apps, if you want to stand out from the competition and really serve your customers well, go ahead and sign up today over at Espressly.co. That's Espressly.co. Okay, everyone. Well, today I wanted to talk to you about something that is, I think, really at the heart of what holds a lot of baristas and just generally people working in coffee shops back from executing great service. And it's the idea of authenticity, performance versus authenticity, specifically the idea that if I am doing something that is pre-prescribed or is not something that just is bubbling up out of my creative you know, person, then it's inauthentic and it's not hospitable and it seems forced. This topic comes up a lot and I hear it from baristas a lot. When I do cafe assessments uh, on site with different coffee shop clients of mine, um, I will interview uh, baristas. I'll interview all of the management team and just take a lot of notes. And sometimes this subject will come up too. And I get it. We automatically assume for one that, you know, if we have to say a line or we have to do a certain task when it comes to hospitality, that it will be the equivalent of, uh, maybe this will resonate with some of you, like uh, welcome to Walgreens or welcome to Moe's or um, everyone who has ever greeted you in the most insincere and just depressing robotic way. We think if we are made to say something, if we are given a workflow of hospitality, or if I can even sniff systems in the conversation around uh, how I operate as a barista or 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 in hospitality, then what we're doing is we're robbing it of its spirit and we're robbing it of its soul. And I, I get it. Certainly, if you did speak like that to customers, that would be bad. No one's asking you to do that. So there's this false equivalency being drawn between uh, the performance that is part of a professional environment and, you know, authenticity. Uh, so let's unpack that a little bit. When you work at a job, it is a performance and there are opportunities within the role of, of barista or manager or whatever to show different unique and authentic elements of who you are. However, there is a necessary editing that's a part of a professional environment because you're not there to show people who you are. You're there to represent the coffee shop and the brand, uh, 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 something greater than yourself, if you can imagine that. 
the gap between doing something in a perfunctory way that makes you sound like a robot and saying the same words or doing the same things in an authentic way has everything to do with reconciling this within your own mind, within yourself. I can't prescribe that for you. If you sign on to work at a coffee shop or a, in any kind of professional environment, I think that, you know, I'm assuming at least that you know what you're doing and that you've said to yourself, well, you know, I'm entering a place where there are rules and there are things that, uh, being, that are being sold, um, you know, and, and I might need to talk to a customer about something that, you know, management wants me to sell or uh, there might be a time where I need to greet a customer when they come in the door, whether I feel like it or not, right? And is that inauthentic or is that authentic? And to some degree, it doesn't matter if it's authentic or inauthentic. That's not the question. The question is, how can you trust that the thing that you're doing contributes to the greater good of the company, yourself, and that person's experience? Are you? Do you have an outward mindset, in other words? Are you just consumed with your navel? Are you consumed with yourself and you view everything through the lens of self? Then it's going to be hard for you to work in hospitality. It really will be. And you need to be okay with signing on for something, like I said, that transcends yourself. So if you know that you're going to be required in your job to upsell an item, you can do it in a way where you believe the words you're saying, you know? Uh, people are coming into this coffee bar for the purpose of parting with their money in hopes that they will get a coffee or a cookie <laughs> or a bag of coffee or something. People's wallets are already out. It's not slimy. It's not weird to ask them questions about, is there anything else I can get you? Or to even, you know, go the step of what I think is a professional way to handle yourself. And that is to generate for yourself the excitement about the stuff that you sell. I hope that that's what you're doing if you're working in a coffee shop. You can't just rely on people to animate you every day. It's not like weekend at Bernie's here, you know? You, you have a manager, there's an owner, but you can't just like flop into the coffee bar and expect everyone to prop you up. You need to generate this kind of ownership of your role and connect the work of the bar with the greater good here. It could be that that person who you, because you just decided that, uh, you know, I'm not going to upsell anybody or I'm not going to tell anybody about the specials or I'm not going to tell anybody about um, what my manager said to you know, tell them about because we have this cheesecake. It's really good. <sighs> you know, I just feel weird saying that. What if that person really, you know, they just needed somebody to suggest it to them and it would have made their day if they had a piece of cheesecake with their coffee, but you decided because it wasn't quote unquote authentic, you decided you were going to completely ignore that fact that there was cheesecake there and you're leaving it on the table literally. So what you've done is you've shortchanged them. The idea of upselling is just one aspect of this. There's workflow for hospitality, saying hello to people when they walk in, saying goodbye when they walk out. There's rules that we have that a person who is self-directed and is owning their role and is operating as an adult in a professional environment will say, ah, these are things with which I can craft an experience. I will say hello. I will say goodbye. And I will do so with uh, the spirit of hospitality behind it so it doesn't sound robotic. No one's asking you to sound robotic. Now, if your manager or owner is saying you have to say these six exact words to every customer every single time, first of all, you still have to do it because they're your boss. But I will say, bosses, please try to at least give some you know, flexibility in the scripts or the prompts and the things that you put out there because there are ways that you can be too controlling of people's language and behaviors. Okay, I recognize that. But... Again, I think there's this false equivalency drawn between structures and standards and systems, performance, let's say, and selling out and being inauthentic, being robotic, being corporate. People want to experience the brand. Technically, they're not really there because you're working there and they want to experience the deepest authenticity of you. 
They want the coffee. They want the baked goods. You know, they want the breakfast. And if you're holding out on them and their experience because you can't reconcile your personal desires with the requirements of, you know, serving somebody well in this environment, then you should probably not work there. So the last thing I'll say about this is when you sign up to work as a barista, when you work in a coffee bar, in a lot of ways, you're like a cover musician. There are ways that you can make the song, quote unquote, your own, but ultimately you're playing somebody else's song unless you've opened your own coffee bar or somebody has explicitly told you that this is exactly what we want you to do, right? But for the most part, there are things that you're going to be required to do that have already been determined without you involved. And you can determine if you're just going to play it by, you know, note for note, robotically. And you can follow the music. You can follow the sheet music. And it will sound like that song. But it will sound off. It's a big difference between somebody who plays with precision because they have to and somebody who plays the same notes but with soul, with the spirit of the thing. Something is there. And it's the heart that the musician brings to it. As a professional, that's what you need to bring to the table. And we can create environments as operators that encourage that kind of thing. We can call that to people's attention and call them to those higher levels. That's part of the process. But I think it's a two-way street. Ultimately, finding a way within yourself to own those different tasks and necessities of your work creates authenticity. Even if you're not using the exact words you would have used if you wrote the manual, ownership of the work leads to authenticity. And again, you've agreed to work here. And part of that is to express the values of the brand and the systems that have been created in good faith, in faith that they have been created for a reason. And it's easy to throw doubt on those reasons and say, well, they don't know what they're talking about and I know better than them. Let's just say that you don't. (laughs) <laughs> you know, let's just say that in order to actually be considered uh, somebody who can contribute to changing anything anyway, you have to be good at doing the thing that you were hired to do first. Then maybe you can, you know, introduce change if you really feel strongly about it. But just by coming in there and being sour about things uh, is not going to make anybody be like, you know, you know that barista we hired? Well, they're really upset about saying, you know, hello to people when they walk in the cafe. And I think because of that, we should just change the way we do things. I don't think that's ever been said. So when it comes to these types of things, I think you really just need to get over yourself and find a way to own the work. And when you're counted on as somebody who's reliable, there may be an opportunity for you to change. And you are going to work in places where maybe you'll never find that opportunity. But later, if you want to open your own coffee shop and do it differently, you certainly can. And people have. It's not to say that the places they worked were quote unquote wrong. They were just doing it a different way for what they wanted to express as their brand. And they had every right to do it that way. And you have every right to, you know, create something different. But so long as you are in an environment where you are again signing up to express the values of the brand through the tasks that have been assigned. You have to find a way to own it, to imbue it with soul and spirit and and authenticity while still doing those things. And when you start believing in them and making them your own, then it stops being perfunctory. It starts being exciting. You start owning it and you actually start having fun. Even if you are being told what to do, you can see the greater purpose of all of this rather than just looking at yourself. So I hope that this is helpful. These are just some thoughts I have on the subject. And so uh, I'm sure there's more to say about it, but I have lived this (laughs) so many times in my career. I see it as a, a perpetual issue in coffee bars. And I hope that some of what I'm explaining right now will help you in your journey also. So uh, thank you, everyone. And I will talk to you next week on another edition of Shift Break from Keys to the Shop. <laughs>